Guys, Mark Goldberg here from Mark Vlogs Watches with a quick word for your friend and mine, Archie Luxury, Paul Pluta, AC3, Archibald Chesterfield III. You know, he invented the quick whist watch check, and uh, the rest of us on YouTube, well, we just stole it. Help keep Archie full-time on YouTube by liking this video, watching this video, tell your fuckhead friends, and make sure to subscribe to his Patreon. And now, Archie Luxury. Hey guys, Archie Luxury, Archie Luxury reviewing the collection of my lifetime. And this is about my wristwatches and a uh, quick wristwatch check. I'm wearing a Polar Explorer 2. Guys, I want to talk about my wristwatch collection. And um, what I've decided to do is, is I've found some photos where I had my collection. Um, this is this is significant collection moments, and what I'm I'm trying to do is 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 to to um, have a look at these, and and see see what um, I've learned from having this number of watches and this mix of collectibles. So I'd like to um, I'd like to have a look at my collection. This here was a time where I um, I had a bit of fun. I had a bit of fun. I had eight pieces. Normally my collection uh, watch number is normally uh, three to five, but uh, here I had eight. Uh, it was interesting. It was quite a an assorted variety. And I had aims of keeping this collection forever. Mm-hmm. That's right, I did. Um, out of this collection here, I have two. Um, well, one piece is remained, which is my uh, Reverso, Jaeger Lecoultre Reverso. And the other piece is my, my Speedy, but it's not the same Speedy. It's a, it's, a, um, it's a different Speedy. It's actually the Speedy that I've got is actually a later speedy with solid solid end links solid end links indeed archie so um let's have a bit of a talk here about this this sort of collection and and what was the modus operandi well it all started i suppose the cornerstone of the collection was the paddock philippe the 5107 because before then i actually sold my pieces to buy this 5107. I had a small inheritance and I had a Breitling Navi Timer. Um, it was the Breitling Navi Timer, the old Navi Timer 2. Um, I had an Amiga Speedmaster Man on the Moon and I had a two-tone Rolex Datejust 36mm with factory diamond dial. So, um... I gotta be honest with you, I um, this 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 was sort of I went into that paddock. That was um, I I I actually sold off all the other pieces because I felt sort of guilty buying such an expensive Patek Philippe, the five one oh seven. How much did it did it cost me? I tell you exactly what it cost me. I paid twelve thousand two hundred and fifty U.S. dollars for that Patek Philippe. That's correct, guys. That is what I, I paid for it. And uh, I got to tell you, I got to tell you, at the time, that was um, it's a considerable amount of money. Considerable. This photo was shot in uh, July 2010. 2010. Um, and I got to be honest with you, the cornerstone was that Patek Philippe. I then, you know, after I got the Patek, I, I really love that Patek. It was just amazing. My first uh, no compromise sort of watch there. I remember the decision to get that Calatrava. I could have got a two-tone bluesy, even a Daytona, a steel Daytona. Uh, but I ended up picking this white gold Calatrava and I loved it absolutely loved it completely 
with this collection here, it sort of grew very quickly. I was, um, I remember the next significant piece was the, um, um, the Jager Le Coutre Reverso. That was a significant piece. That was for my 40th birthday, which didn't happen until 2012. But I got it before just to, because I really loved the look of that piece. Um, interesting pieces in this collection here. I acquired a um, Vacheron Constantine. I got it from Shawnee from European Watch Gallery in Melbourne. Uh, he was then called Armadale Watch Gallery, I think. And it was just a beautiful 33 mil Vacheron 6405 from 1960. Loved it, loved it to death. Um, and I got to be honest with you, um, they, 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 they were a very, very um, cool watch, fantastic condition. Little, little, little. It didn't have the. Um, the, the bezel had just very, very fine, um, just very, very fine. It's not a, it's not the hobnail. It was just, just, just special lines. Very, very fine fat pattern on the, the bezel there. I, I adored it. I then in succession, I got the uh, Audemars Piguet, which I got to be honest with you. I basically bought the cheapest Audemars Piguet dress watch, 32 mil. I probably should have got a better condition one. It wasn't terrible, a little bit over polished, uh, had a little bit of a stain on the dial, which I suspect those sort of cases aren't very waterproof. That's that's kind of what happened there. Uh, and the the Explorer two that came. How did the Explorer two came? Well, my friend's Mercedes Pagoda. The commission for selling the Mercedes was the Explorer 2. Um, I sold it for about $50,000. The Pagoda now is worth about 200000 Ouch! Archie, ouch. Yes, indeed. Um, the other pieces which I came into the collection was the two-tone uh, AP. Very, very <clears throat> elegant watch. It developed a fault with the, the threading on the crown. Real bitch to fix. I flicked that very quickly after that fault came up. The Amiga Speedmaster. That was quite a nice nice watch there. Had the, um, the pulsation type dial. Sorry, pulsation bezel, I should say. And the other piece I got was a Cartier Panther. Cartier Panther. Which... <clears throat> It was a, <clears throat> it was it was a watch. I always liked the Cartiers. So this collection here was was a bit of a compromise. It kind of a bit of a, a hodgepodge, but it had a had some really cool features. Eight pieces. Pretty cool number. I had um, the Holy Trinity with the Patek, the VC, and the and two APs. Mind you, one was a quartz one. You could, could hardly sort of, um, yeah, that was a bit of a compromise. I had a Jager Le Coutre, two heavy hitting sports, the uh, Rolex Explorer 2 and the Speedy. And a very casual Panther. This was a quartz, Cartier Panther quartz. Yes, yes. So I had two quartzes, two sports, uh, it was quite two APs, quite an interesting kind of collection there. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. What happened was, why did I, I sell these things off? Well, I, I think what basically happened was I kind of, it's one of these things. I, 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 I love my collection. Then I regroup. I had someone who wanted to buy the Vacheron. They offered me I paid about 2200 and I sold it. I had had the watch serviced, very delicately polished by Watch Tech, and I sold it for 4850. And then I decided, you know, I got out of the Vacheron, I, you know what? I'd like to get rid of the um the AP, the AP I'd like to get rid of. Why? 
uh, it wasn't perfect. Then the um, uh, then the um, um, the quartz played up with the threading. The watchmaker said, I can fix this so it works for a couple months. Get rid of the fucking thing. It's going to need a AP service. And just get rid of it. It's going to be, you know, you're going to overcapitalize on it. So I flicked out of that. And what I was really left with, the, um, the Cartier, fuck, that was a disaster. I sold it to this really nasty bitch in Israel. She tried to defraud me. Fuck. She tried to defraud me. I sent it. I sold it on, on Fleabay. I sent it, uh, EMS, she refused to sign for it, so I was waiting at her post office, she refused to sign for it and tried to get a refund, fucking nasty bitch, very, very nasty bitch indeed, eventually I did get it back and I sold it at a slight loss, it had a slight dial blemish which kind of pissed me off, I asked Cartier how much for a new dial, it was ridiculous, I thought, ah, oh, fuck this thing off. Um, so I, I basically decided after this here, I went into steel pieces, which is, was a white metal collection. So this collection here, you can see yellow gold, you can see two tone and you can see white metals, white gold, steel. The next phase was when I said, you know what? I don't like the hodgepodge of metal choices. Let's go white metal. So we'll talk about that next in the next video. This collection here, how did I feel about it? Well, it was quite a nice collection. Um, I think in hindsight now, the, the two, the AP dress watch and the VC, too small. 33 and 32 mil, too fucking small. Even the, the Royal Oak Quartz, 33 mil, it wore a bit bigger, but it was too small. The Panther, yeah, it was too small as well. So they, they were kind of, uh, the the nice pieces, the four good fundamentals were the, the Patek Philippe 5107, the JLC Reverso, the Rolex Explorer 2, and the Speedy. So I kind of regrouped. I kind of regrouped, which was an interesting situation in itself there. So I, I, I converted this six-piece collection Sorry, I converted this eight piece into a six piece. And that's probably, you know, I gotta be honest with you, I had eight pieces here, but I was more happy when I went to the six. It, this, this here, this was, was um, in, in my life, in, in my collections, my collections have really been compact collections. I'm a true believer in quality over quantity. This eight piece collection here, was sort of the largest I've, I've kind of had for a, for, a, for a while of luxury watches. Watches are expensive and, you know, I, I'd had financial troubles and, 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 and dramas in my life, but it was quite interesting where I, um, I churned these over. So um, it was interesting. It was interesting. It was very, very interesting. Um, they were cool pieces. They were very cool. But I, I, this, I look at this photo here and I think, you know, I miss the paddock. I've still got the Reverso. Um, the smaller dress watches, I think, are too small. I'm pleased I got out. I'm pleased I got out. They were too small. I got good money. I got out and I grew my collection. So i got to be honest with you. Some of these pieces here, I think quartz, I, I don't really want to own a quartz piece. I had two quartz, the, the Cartier and the AP. Quartz fucking sucks. Quartz really sucks. So, thinking about it, I'm. I look at this collection here. It was a nice collection, but I think it. I think it's good to have sold the pieces I did sell. Okay, guys, this is uh, the first the first one in the series. This is my eight piece collection from. This was 2010, July 2010. Tell me what you think. What did you think? What did you think of this collection? Guys, like, subscribe, tell your fuckhead friends, put some nasty comments. Tell me, how did you rate this collection? I would say myself at a 10, 
I'd say this collection was probably a six and a half or a seven. Bit of compromise there, but some good fundamentals. Okay, guys, this is the first one in the series. Tell me if you like this series or you hate it. Tell me what you think. And uh, until next time, ciao, fuckers. Oh. Hey, Archie Luxury fans. If you're into luxury, then you got to be into 66 Buick Rivieras. Check out my son and I, Alex, as we restore this beautiful 66 Buick. Neighbors are having a picnic, you know, having fun and stuff. Me, I'm doing cars. It's what I've done my whole life. Hey guys, it's Paul Pluter. I'm the method actor who plays Archibald Chesterfield III. Guys, I want to have a quick talk to you. Do you need to sell a wristwatch? Do you want to uh, sell a piece uh, for reinvestment? Do you have too many watches? Well, guys, I'm here to tell you that my good friends at Sydney and Brisbane Vintage Watch Co. are looking for quality wristwatches for their store. Now, Ronnie has instructed me to tell you guys that he is paying more than other dealers. That's correct. He pays top prices for quality pieces. So guys, if you've got a Rolex, a Rolex you want to sell, or a Patek, or anything, you want to sell a wristwatch, give the guys at Vintage Watch, Vintage Sydney, Vintage, well, it's Vintage Watch Co. Vintage Watch Co. Give them a call. That's right, guys. Um, <clears throat> they're paying good prices. They've always been very, very fair to me. And i, I got to tell you, they are nice people to do business with. I'm just trying to find their card here. Where the hell did I... Where did I put it? Where did I put it? Um, look, ask for Ronnie. Ronnie in Brisbane. Or Philip in sydney philip in sydney that's correct they will look after you tell them archie sent you that's right tell them archie sent you they're paying top prices that's correct brisbane and sydney vintage watch co your premium place to sell watches tell me guys this is for you Tell them Archie sent you, and they will give you extra keen pricing. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, once again, Mark Goldberg for Archie Luxury AC3, the Pontiff Satan Deville. I want to sincerely thank you for having sat through this video because I know it was awful. But you know what? You do it for the greater good of humanity. Thank you so much. Now, a couple of quick pieces of homework. Now that you've watched this video, I would like you to hit thumbs up. If you must, hit thumbs down. But if you'd hit thumbs up, I would especially appreciate it. Go ahead and leave a really nasty comment and tell him how awful this content was. But most importantly of all, the entire reason that I am linking up with Archie Luxury in the first place. I am a published author. Let dogs be dogs. Available in bookstores, Amazon, and electronically somewhere near you. Remember, Archie Luxury. He's not just a figment of your imagination. <laughs>